I'm Al Convey, and welcome to Shipwrecked Extra, the show that peels the banana skin of life on Yukuve. Last time on Shipwrecked, food and fun was in short supply. The morale's really low right now. So the goddess answered their prayers with a gift from the skies. Thank you, goddess! After gorging on rice and soya, the rations run low once more. And drastic times call for drastic measures. Help us, Man Friday arrives in a flash of palm leaves and chocolate, and their tummies are full once again. <laughs> This has been the best day ever. Obviously, myself and the cast are marooned on a desert island. I mean, all we've got is this. Oh, you reckon there's a theatre back there, a cinema, or a pub, a nightclub, do you? Yeah, Slim and No Chance, mate, and Slim's just swam out to sea. So how do the cast entertain themselves? Now, I'm pretty good at doing keepy-ups with a football, learnt it at school, but there's a girl here amongst the cast who, believe it or not, can dance and juggle with fire. Ooh! Shot! I play with fire. Well, how do you discover fire throwing and fire juggling? I went to a festival when I was about 16, and I saw some people doing it, and I thought it was just the most amazing beautiful thing ever. Dance routine that you put together, do you get them off steps or Spice Girls or something like that? Um, no, it's, it's more how to spin the stick around you. It's like any sort of dancing, I think. You, you have special moves and then you just mix them together and match them to be your own style and, and your own way of doing it. I've, you know, had a couple of little burns here and there, but you know how to deal with it. I personally am dying to give it a bash. Put it in my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Wearing my full fireproof yeah. gear, of course. <laughs> oh. Teach you how to do it. You'll teach me? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So we'll start off without fire initially. Yeah. That's great, man. Can I have a bash? really camp <laughs> doing that. <laughs> okay, maybe it'd be better with the sticks, Al. Better with the sticks? What gives you that impression? Oh! oh. One for the money, two for the show. Three to get rid of this, go, go, go. So, Malia, tell me, do you think I'm ready to move on to setting this alight? Yeah, you'll be right, mate. <laughs> you'll be fine. I've got a fire blanket. I promise to tell you if you're on fire. You'll let me know, just in case I don't notice myself. <laughs> Sorry about the use of the naughty word right there. <laughs> I just took all the hairs off my hands. Okay, everyone grab something. Let's go burn it all. Happy birthday, dear Al. Happy birthday to you. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble, man. Thanks, though. Come here. I've got to let you into a secret. It's not really my birthday, though there have been plenty here on Yukube with some big celebrations. How am I supposed to eat that? It's made of sand. You and I in a little toy shop Buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got Floating in the summer sky Ninety-nine red balloons Happy birthday! It's a birthday tradition for the crew to provide gifts, and on Jeffro's big day, we decided to add to the fun by planting a couple of bleating goats on a nearby island. 
The crew's T-boy planted the treasure map at the goddess. That's the island over there where the goats are. <coughs> and uh, that's the map I've just planted to show them how to get there. Thanks for explaining that, Nick. Sort of. And all that was left was for Jeffro to find the booty. Piece of treasure map. <laughs> You've got to go to another island. Right, y'all, go. <laughs> Not all birthdays go to plan. Two, three, left. Today was my birthday and someone gave me like, a palm leaf with my name carved in it. I'd be absolutely gutted with that. I think, what's that rubbish? Where's a proper present? <laughs> Out here, it's a real big deal and it's like everything's like, really heartfelt, so that's no, really good. It brings everyone together. Nice. <laughs> But not all the presents were so well received. Do you think seriously that you'll be walking down New Street in Brum with um, that umbrella that Simon made for you? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. Fortunately, Vicky's gift from the crew was more up her street. Yeah! What'd you get? Um, I got four bottles of rum. Yeah! And some pitted dates. Did Salva get you anything for your birthday? No, but later on in the evening when the rum, ca rum came out, He'd started drinking and he'd done a strip, put Sarah's thong on and um, danced around and made me dance with him and he was completely naked. And then I really don't remember much after that. <laughs> where I need my mum to bring me a cup of tea and some toast. It's one of them mornings. After a big night out on the sauce, what better way to cure your hangover than the traditional Yakuvian sandcastle building competition? This week's special prize from Al? A caravan. Nah, not really. It's a papaya. Doesn't look like I'll be winning it. Again. Oh, Jeffro's got something to say. What's the prize? Undisclosed at this moment, but it is worth having. So is we it definitely the worth having? Do you know what it is? I can't disclose that. <laughs> the competition gets off to a rip-roaring start. Smack bum. The Brick Chicks haven't worked this hard since they won backstage passes to a Robbie Williams gig. What's the plan, Jeff? <laughs> I'm just going to do it as I go. And it's nice to see the East End boys have a definite plan. The Yanks are determined to go for gold, for God, their mum, and the good old US of A. Making the clouds. The Aussies might seem confident they'll beat the Poms as they do in swimming, cricket, rugby. Well, you get the picture, sport. Judge and jury Allen surveys the damage, I mean, castles. So, what is it you guys have gone for here? Mate, because we're Australian, we don't have alligators. Never mind that, can we bribe you with some coconut? No, oh, not with know. coconut, I'm afraid. No? My, 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 Rainbow, this is something a little bit special. Tell me about it. Well, we are trying to go for the personal flair here. There's a rainbow, there's Hollywood, Brandy, and there's Dice. Very nice. Well, thanks, Al. So, how's the Brit Boys team? We've gone for a, you know, a typical sort of sand castle. Yeah, there's market stores in there. If you look closely enough, you can see the Sunday traders. The King's sort of entry is just here. 
But he's not in at the moment, he's away in Spain. Oh. So who's your lovely friend? I'm making you a Pacific lady friend and she's coming to the island to tempt you. I'm in Fiji. I'm 23 years old and I'm building a sandcastle. Everyone's done really well and you can be really proud of yourselves. I'll be honest with you, this one is the best. <laughs> so the Aussies snatched victory with their sea monster. Go on, Sarah, you good old sport. It's the taking part that counts, love. Coming up in part two, the mysterious man Friday gets the cast overexcited. You are my god. <laughs> you are a god. Blood, sweat and tears are shed when the cast and crew collide. Um, wipe the sand across the faces. And Geordie pulls at the heartstrings with a little song he wrote. La, 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 la. When food's low, the last thing on the cast mind is having some fun. I mean, it's no holiday, but it's not a boot camp either. So we, the crew, provide them with a method to find some grub and have a laugh along the way. Simple. We are running out of food at a fast, fast rate. We're running out of yam and sweet potato. I want to pray to our God. Can you bring us some rice, please? We're going to ask Man Friday for more food. I haven't brought my dancing shoes with me, unfortunately, so I'll probably let them get on with it themselves. We're calling Friday Kubi Lebu! We're calling Friday Kubi Lebu! Man Friday, we summon you! Man Friday, we summon you! Vicky from Birmingham is about to do her chance as well. Are you going to keep the usual accent, love, or are you going to go for something different? I'm going to keep my usual Birmingham accent. Why, is that a problem? No, nice. I think it's sound. As part of the island constitution, the cast can use their lifeline Man Friday to bring them some food and fun. Man Friday! We're calling from I want to be I want to be telling you! Hands in a spatula! I want a new fishing net! I would like a game of Twister, please! Definitely seen Simon knocking around Oxford Street with all the Harry Krishna Brigade, who I absolutely love personally. Don't get me wrong, it's just amazing. Help us, please! Those kids are so dramatic. OK, OK, we'll get you Man Friday, but who will it be? I'm just really worried that we're not really getting across the sort of existential undertones that are sort of rippling through the show. Be quiet, Nick. We need to talk about Man Friday. They've called Man Friday, so um, any flashes of genius? About Palasa, that the guy who trained the English cars. <laughs> Boringly predictable. How about Marika from the village? <laughs> no, not him. Oh, I've got it. Brilliant. Who do you think Man Friday is going to be? 
Man Friday is is bigger than uh, he's bigger than the Wizard of Oz. I think Man Friday is the party man. He's massive. He's the universe. That is Man Friday. No, no, he's Black Bear, so man, no. Why don't we get Pierre, the French guy who did his leg in the selection weekend? That's an outstanding idea. Pierre was all set to be one of the shipwrecked cast when a broken leg shattered his dreams. So when Man Friday was called, guess who he chose? I am Man Friday. As Pierre packed his bounty of food, the cast can only dream of what goodies he may bring. Smart sauce. Ketchup. Oil. Acre bleu. But I think we should all have chocolate every day. Chocolate. Chocolate digestives. Digestive biscuits. Peanut butter. Tea. Peanuts butter. What else? Jam. Jelly sweets. You've got all that, Vicky, as well as noodles, cards, bean sweets, pasta, torches, sheep, onions, TVs, olives, jet skis. I have no idea how, but it'll it'll be big and awesome. And I think it's possibly going to be a submarine coming out of water. <laughs> I'm expecting Man Friday to arrive on Friday. Man Friday today, and let's see, we have the food today. Oh, please. I'm looking for that boat. I believe the dot on the horizon is probably Man Friday. Really happy about um, Pierre being here. Oh, you are my god. I think you are a god. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Pierre might get him some. The French stud. Oh. Who knows? I mean, I just want some for me as long as they share with the loving. I'll be happy. Oh, that's a good technique. How many? How many? How many have that technique? That After seven oh, weeks of yam, Man Friday's gifts drive the cast a little bit crazy. Yeah, I love peanut butter. We're going to kill the pig now! And a certain someone has one spoon of sugar too many. So you can't go mad. Selvers and TJ decided they want to open everything. Everyone's just going crazy. Everything's being open. There's no rations, there's no nothing. They're all just... Cut off everyone's head and stake them! Yeah! And when there are no grannies to dance with at the party, there's always the conga. Those kids sure know how to party. It is hot here, but not as hot as this little beauty. Now, you all know that I fancy myself as a bit of a dab hand on the guitar, so I thought I'd sing you a song. Who's Nick, my girlfriend? Geordie. Sat on the beach with uh, Geordie, yeah. as you can hear, strumming away. That's a tuneful little number you got going there, fella. Yeah, that's called tuning. When did you start playing the guitar, Geordie, and why did you choose this over any other instrument? I don't actually know why I chose playing guitar. L, I think it was because Mum probably had one, and I wanted to be in a rock band, you know. If you're in a band, you've yeah. got harmonies going on with backing singers and whatever. Who's who's your best um, singer um, amongst the cast? Oh, definitely Rainbow, actually. She's a very talented musician. Actually. What yeah. about Vicky? What's yeah. she like? Yeah, she's really good. Very talented as well. Who, if you held auditions, would you definitely not have in your band? <laughs> no, I think I would uh, not put in Salvo. Today. Darling, I love you. I think everybody love you. And he goes, la 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 la
sure that the best of friends will ever be. They've had their fill of the old current bun. It's now time for something a little more invigorating, as instigated by a resident PE teacher, Miss Everton. At the moment, there's not much going on. It's been a vast attempt to create some fun and activity amongst our uh, lazy layabout crew at the moment. We, uh, me and Jeff, have decided to build a volleyball court on the beach. Now, just talk us through a couple of your players. I'd say uh, our key players are uh, myself, obviously. Some vital skills, a few tactics going on there. Our American dude, Randy, he's one of our vital players. He can do a round the back up in the air serve. So another crucial player was Vicky. Absolutely crucial to the team, couldn't have done it without it. Never stop running about, never stop working hard. So uh, without those on the team, you know, we'd really struggle to gel. Win! Cass crew relations up till now have been pretty tight, but when it comes to a serious game of volleyball, there's no prizes for second place. 1-0. Oh! Okay, we've got a timeout situation. Level on points. Next one is the winner. Yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game of two halves, isn't it? And I thought, to be honest, the lads and the Sheila down on the deck played pretty well. Of course, you're playing against a bunch of muppets. I mean, if you're playing championship quality teams, It'll be a different kettle of fish. But as I say, everyone's a old winner, especially us. Nice one. Well, gang, thought it was a good game, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who wins or loses, it's how you play the game, and I thought we were all wicked. So let's have another hand in. Hello. <laughs> See you later. One, two, three, team! <laughs> the eye candy we have for you next time on Extra includes Sarah taking a pop at the title. Nice to meet you, Sarah, and thanks very much for asking me on to your show. Jeff Rowe teaching Salvo the Queen's English. Ball. With huge Bristol. With huge Bristol. Parker. And Vicky. Well, lads, have we got a treat for you.
Hello and welcome to Shipwrecked Extra. I'm Al Combi. Stick with me as I give you an access all areas tour of life on Yakube. Last time on Shipwrecked, Geordie's birthday proved a good bash. But it used the last of the food and made the ration run essential. Five people set out, but Sean didn't even make it past the point. The run proved hard and two boats soon became one. They finally made it to Dravuni for rations and a sing-song. When it was time to go back to the island, Simon decided to stay behind. I'll see you in London. Now that all the cast are a dab hand at survival, much like myself, many of them have decided to embark on their own personal projects, like this little beauty. Oh! Everyone who's anyone on this island reckons they can do my job. Maybe they can, maybe they can. Sarah reckons she could, so I gave her the opportunity to interview me. got with us our convi presenter of Shipwreck Extra. Al, how can you truly understand life as a cast member on this island if you yourself don't actually live as one? I can see where you're coming from but at the same time Sarah I've got to contradict you because as much as possible I've been living my life as an islander aside from maybe a roof over my head and hot running water. Do you feel that you should be treated any differently as a celebrity by the other members of the crew? If you ask any of the crew members, or you see any footage of me, you know, behind the scenes, you'll see me being the real Al Convy, just, just a regular guy, you know. I don't want any special treatment. It's just like the way I am with you. It's just a regular hangout conversation. There's never a run around to get me into... Kirsty, can you come here a minute? Personal assistants are supposed to be personal by my side. Can you go and get me a cup of tea? A lot of the time you see presenters throwing wobblies or someone hasn't got them the right tape or they've stepped across into another crew shot and, you know, I'd just like to handle myself with some decorum. <laughs> what do you mean? You're trying to do something? Yeah. Uh, trying to do something here now. Oh, 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 and Shipwreck gets priority over Shipwreck Extra, we does are it? the proper program! Have you got a presenter on your show? Don't think so. You what? What did you say? Turn the camera off. Turn it off. They won't want to see this. Get out of the way for a start. Is that all you got? What about the cast? Think of me as a 24-hour shop. I'm always open. You know, if they've got a problem, they want someone to deal with it, come to me first. I'll handle it for them. Uh, we have a complaint. We just painted the veggie patch, and nothing's growing there. The tomatoes are barely, barely growing. Oh, can There's I no hear anything? Do you understand that I get time off like you two do? Hippie chicks, here we go. All the veggie patches in trouble, all the tomatoes are all dying. I'm doing my work! Yeah. You, need, you need to eat? Yeah? Eat that, yeah? <laughs> With the overwhelming success of Shipwreck Textra, do you find it annoying that, you know, you go down the street, you get a lot of attention, people pounding you for your autograph? Yeah, it happens once or twice, you know, and, and at the same time, if a fan does come up to you and ask for an autograph, of course I'm going to oblige, you know, I adore my fans. To be honest, no, 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 thank you. No more autographs, no, thank you. Thanks very much. I haven't got a pen. Did you 
say he wanted my autograph? What's it? You want my autograph? What's it? Well, well, to be honest, I'm, the thing is, I'm just trying to read my newspaper and, you know, I get this hassle all the time in, in London, so I think I'll probably leave you here, OK? Well, thanks ever so much, Al. That's a pleasure, Sarah. Um, that was our combi. I'm Sarah Crawford, and until next time, goodbye. One of the other projects that the cast have come up with is changing their hair, all because the cameras are here. Tell you what, you wouldn't catch me doing that. No way. It's like David Hasselhoff sort of looking at it at the moment. By the time we get back, everyone will be wearing them. Uh huh. You'll see. <laughs> Can't see it myself. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I'm the one wearing well. it and I like it. Well done, mate. Mucho gracias, senor. Now that Sean has got to grips with island life, his mind has moved on to other matters. In fact, loads of them. Go, soldier. I've been thinking of ideas just to. So weird. Um, I'm a normal person, but I like to do odd things just to throw people's mindsets. Okay, son, let's hear these ideas. Show me what you got. Tell you the whole basis on Project D. E. Me and another person here on the island were um, planning an escape. We were going to waterproof our stuff and swim at the crack of dawn to Javuni. Nice idea, son, but you didn't follow through. What else you got? Before I came here, I had two things I wanted to do no matter what. One was play hopscotch on the beach, which I still haven't done yet. Son, you are a disgrace to my beloved core. And the other one is do a hut cam naked. My second guest, which will be... <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean. Forgot to use his sun protection lotion and look difference. Ouch! Right, ready? Say it, ready? Ow! Don't really approve of that one, but at least you did it. The other idea I have is I'm gonna hang from the rafters upside down and do a whole hut cam upside down. Just weird stuff. That's not weird, that's just plain dumb. Some golf clubs. This is the shaft for my driver. The putter here, which is this one, is a little bit closer being created. Just attach this to the end, and then you have a little putter. Well, it's actually a left handed putter, so we put it this way. Ah, it just died off. is a man's game. Well done, son. Another idea I have is I want to take one of the doors off of hut cam. Hey, Jordy, can you give me a hand? go. Nice little door. So you have to walk through the door every day you walk through the trail. <laughs> What's 
up with this door? <laughs> Why is there a door? We're here to have fun, and hopefully they find humor in it. If not, oh well. Join us after the break as Alan reveals his cinematic masterpiece. Essentially, it's a farce. Salvo gets to grips with the finer points of the English language. For a spot of as your father. For a spot of how your father pucker. And we get an insight into Vicky's page three ambitions. She's good. I mean, I'm not a businessman, but she's got some assets and I want to invest in them. Hello again. Hope you are pleasantly refreshed because there is a mouth-watering incident taking place on Yukube. We've arranged a photo shoot for a certain page three wannabe. Whilst watching one of your very interesting hut cams, Vicky, you mentioned that um, you quite fancy being a page three model. Yeah. I reckon I need to find out what Vicky's brother Thomas will make of all this. I'm in Birmingham with him and his mate Dean. Who's this? <laughs> well, this is uh, me mate Dean. How you doing, Dean? One of my sister's fans. Fancies a lot, man. <laughs> I started talking about being a page three model when I was about 13 years old. Did you know that she, she's harboring dreams about being a page three model? It's news to me. It's just something I've always wanted to do from a very young age. Now, that seemed to come as quite a shock to you then when I said that to you, Thomas. Is that right? Oh, yeah, because it's the first I've heard of it. My dad wasn't too happy about it because he thought he'd hate to go down the pub and his mates were all like, oh, have you seen this girl's boobs in here? And then, you know, they're looking at his daughter sort of thing. He's going to love it, I know, he is. I just get a little stick off everyone when they say, I've seen your sister in the back, boob nights off on, so, you know. No, I know that you're a big guy and you're a big brother and you're looking after her, right? But in terms of assets for that sort of job, she's got them. Well, well I wouldn't know. <laughs> As I mentioned, I'm not the cameraman on this particular shoot. If at any time he does ask you to remove the top half of your bikini, will you be doing that? No, definitely not. Can you stop sitting on the fence and give me a straight answer? <laughs> I'm not sitting on the fence. So who is the sleazy peddler of filth coming to exploit poor impressionable young Victoria? Hi, the name's Kuma, Nelson Kuma. Just been uh, drafted in from Brooklyn to uh, Yakovi, uh, Fijian Island, to shoot this broad we got behind me. Uh, name's uh, Vicky Brooks, kind of similar to Brooklyn. All right, Vicky, how you doing? OK, you want to be a page three model, is that right? Yes, yeah, well, let right. me see it, let me see it. Smile, kid, come on, come on. Make love to the camera, Vicky, make love to the camera. She's good. I mean, I'm not a businessman, but she's got some assets and I want to invest in them. That is beautiful. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. Let's 
natural. That's beautiful. That's what I wanted. Okay. And put a funny face. Now just remove the top. Take the strap off your shoulder, the left, the left, the left breast. But the last word on the subject must go to Brother Thomas. She's not just a body at the end of the day. I mean, dog aside, she has, she's, has got brains. I'm going to have a sneaky peep at one of Hollywood's latest movie releases. Whilst I'm doing that, why don't you check out Alan's own version of your Wood? It's a corker. Right, what's the title of it, Al, and uh, what's the concept behind it? Scripted together a film called Maroon. And it's about, it's set on a reality TV show on a deserted island. Just an original concept. So who have you picked for each particular character? Salvo is playing uh, a native islander. He lives in the jungle by himself and doesn't speak any English. We have Vicky playing the blonde bombshell. We have Randy playing the heroic lead. Jeff is going to be the comedy camp person. Malia is going to play a, um, a nerd who wants to bring her computer as her luxury item but wasn't allowed to. And how does the plot unfold? One by one, people start going missing, and obviously they think it's this uh, peculiar chap they see swinging from trees and everything. And for some reason, there always seems to be one extra chicken in the coop the next day. Everyone, everyone tries to escape who's left and uh, Malia stays and falls madly in love with uh, Salvo. <laughs> is it based on a true story at all? There are elements of truth in it, yeah, within the, within the plot, uh, but essentially it's a farce. Have you got any previous experience whatsoever? None at all, no. no. What about inspirational directors that have motivated you for this role? My brother was an extra on Gladiator, so uh, Ridley Scott. Well, all that's left for me to, to say, Al, in your new directorial role is um, good luck and thanks very much for not including me in it. Cheers, mate. Luckily for cinema audiences around the world, this potential turkey never made it past the development stage. Ridley Scott can sleep easy tonight. One of Salvo's projects on the island is to read and write in English. Prior to arriving on Yukuve, he spent 18 months in London. And those of you who've been to the capital will understand that they speak a totally different language, which is why we drafted in Jeff, the Cockney boy, to be his teacher. Salvo, we're going to teach you some Cockney, all right? All right, mate. OK, when you come and see me around London, I want you to be able to speak like this. All yeah? right, mate. Good stuff, right. Cheers, mate. Picture the James Dean. Picture the James Dean. I'm having a pig's ear. I want a big air. When I clock this treacle. When I clock this treacle. With huge bristles. With huge bristles. Giving me the minces. Giving me the minces. So I bowl over and whisper in a Brighton. How's about me, you? <laughs> banana the rubber dub. How's about me, and you? Banana the rubber dub. For a spot of how's your father. For the spot of how your father pucker. Perfect. But Salvo, what happens when you go for a cup of Rosie with Her Majesty? Perfect. You need to learn to speak in a manner more befitting your station. That verbose chap Leon would make an ideal tutor. We are going to teach you how to say what you said early on in Cogni. Okay. In the Queen's English. Polite English, isn't it? Indeed. Aye, oh, mate. Imagine the setting. I imagine the setting. No hand action. I'm enjoying a fine spot of whiskey. I'm enjoying the fine the spot of whiskey. When suddenly a creature of fine distinction and proportion. When suddenly a creature. A creature of fine distinction. Of a fine distinction. Very nice. And, and proportion. Proportions. Enters one's vision. Vision. Visions. I casually meander over. I casually meander over. Thank you. Listen to me. Tumbler in my right hand. Tumbler in my right hand. A fine cigar in my left. Fine cigar in my left. That's your right hand, Sal. But that's OK. We'll overlook that. My left. Wood. Wood. Wool. Wool. It'd be incredibly rude. Would it be incredible of road of me to suggest that 
of me to suggest that. No, no, not too animated, not too Sicilian. It's more concise. Oh, hi, mate. Of me to suggest that. You might like to depart this style establishment. You might like to depart this style establishment. For a tussle in my boudoir. For a tussle. In my boudoir. In my boudoir. Delightful. Delightful. <laughs> Salvo, no debutante is now safe from your dubious charms. Check this out, right? Every five days there's a turnover of crew here on Yukube, but because the weather's been so severe, we've actually been marooned with a minimal amount of supplies. The high wind and driving rain have kept us here five days longer than we should have been. And to be honest, professionalism is beginning to crack. It's looking pretty bad, the rain's coming down. People around me wearing the frown I say, come on boat Come and save us boat but Take us back home to Suva Take us back home And cracking up is not always that pretty. Series producer Al sums up the prevailing mood. So now the crew is shipwrecked. Boat tried to leave Suva yesterday. Got snapped in half. 30 people left bobbing around in the water. No food, no booze. It's raining. Whilst Kiwi sound man Clay is beginning to turn rather odd. I found this um, tree stump. It's not quite square across the top, so I've decided just to square it up. It's, uh, it's sort of quite pleasing in a sort of strange way. In fact, they've all begun to go a bit mental. Some of the crew have invented some rather strange methods of getting out of here. Put the count on, Mum, I'm coming home! I've got to get out of here. I've got to leave you. It's like a chopper for one, thanks. Helicopter, yeah. Four hours, great. I'll see you then. Cheers. You know what? I don't know what the crew's problem is. All you got to do is pole vault from one island to the other. It's about 40 miles. Should be a doddle. <laughs> Told you. Piece of cake. Until next time, goodbye. Oi, get us a towel, will you? Next time on Shipwrecked Extra, we look back at island leaders. Who did they love and who did they loathe? Sean as a leader is just absolutely useless. Plus, find out what Andy Peters brings when he visits your desert island. I couldn't come all this way and visit you on your own island without bringing you a small gift. <laughs>
Bula and welcome to Shipwrecked Extra, the show that takes you on a journey below the surface of life as a member of the cast on Yakuve. Last time on Shipwreck, the goat's number was up. The goat will be dead by midday. Are you gonna kill the goats? But CJ and Malia had other plans. The intention is that we can tie him up, put him on the raft, carry him across to set him free. <laughs> yeah, girl, take the goat back. Yeah. Yeah. That's extreme vegetarianism, that's an extreme stance, I think. All but Alan saw the funny side. We said all along that stealing was stealing. And I do not want to be on the island with a hypocrisy rather than a democracy. So he decided to jump ship. Randy and Leon made their own bid for freedom. <laughs> and the rest of the cast were left to enjoy their last week on the island. Mind you, they didn't seem that sorry to leave. Happy and at the same time sad. I'm really happy about going. <laughs> Man the pumps! Put up the sails! Row faster! Now, those are the sort of orders a captain of a ship might give to his crew. But here on the island, the constitution dictates that the cast members must choose a new leader every week. The cast are having a meeting, chaired by Simon. He was voted in as the new leader under the constitution this week. But how do they choose their leaders? Well, it's a complicated process where you write on a scrap of paper and chuck it in a hat. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about the votes. OK, we've got a new leader. Sada! Thank you very much. Sorry. Well, there we go. Let's do that. Bruce, my advice. Do us proud. I will. Simon, thank you, Buffalo. Congratulations. Jeffro. Hi, Jeffro. Sure. Wake up, sure. By the majority, we have new leader as Man Friday Pierre. This is not fair. I don't want to be leader at all. I feel bad about that. Did you actually nominate yourself to be leader, or did someone else put you up for it? No, I had to pretty much beg everyone. Yep. You do that and you don't get voted in, then you feel like a bit of a donut. What qualities do you think you need out here rather than at home? Uh, I think you need to be approachable. Yeah. Oh, forget it. You're not worth it. Have your own opinions. We're going to try and have a bit more fun. But be open to other people's opinions too. And I appreciate your, your, your views and it's, it's taken into consideration. You need to be organised. Now, I just don't know what to do here. But then again, being a leader, I don't think is... It's not that big of a deal here, you know, it's not like you've got to run a country or anything, it's, yeah. Do we have any idea? CJ was the first of our cast to be nominated as leader on Yukube, and I have a question for her. Excuse me, miss, when, when, when you were in charge of all those people on, on, on that island, what was it like? And can I go to the toilet, please? Out of all the leaders, how do you think your week compared to everyone else's? My week was probably the hardest week, because it was the first week and there was a lot of organising to be done and very little fun. I, I do think that today we've got a lot to get through and everything, and we definitely need to get some sort of shelter built for tonight. It looks like the teacher got everyone in the class working hard. Well, almost everyone. The main problems that I had was definitely the laziness of the rest of the girls. The Brit girls when Donna and Gemma were here and also Sarah and Vicky. I just feel really weak because you haven't eaten anything. I've got no energy at all. Other than Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you deal with that? I just told them, basically. 
They're all sunbathing on the beach. I'm going to go tell them. CJ's on a mission. I looked over, saw CJ and I was like, you're too nervous. Donna! Vicky, Gemma, can I talk to you a minute? I came down to the sea and they were all having a swim and sunbathe. All we need is a of firewood and, and like you're sunbathing and swimming. But she does talk to us as we're our pupils, doesn't she? She really does. <laughs> yeah, her tone of voice sometimes can be a bit out of place. There's no need for it. I think she might be a little bitter. You know, she's just kind of like, oh, people won't do it or people might. And kind of has that attitude a little bit more. What I didn't want to be was like a dictator that just said, you know, you have to do this and you have to do that. I mean, I know I'm being a killjoy and everything, but we've got to do it. And, uh, and it worked, but I'm sure they went in hot cam and said a few words about it all. And no, I just felt like strangling her at one stage because she gets so bossy. When Alan became leader, he not only brought his people management skills to the negotiating table, but he also invented a rather ingenious method of controlling the cast verbal diarrhea. Hope it works for me. I came up with this fantastic idea to, uh, to shut people up. They could only talk. Uh, if they were touching my head. Nothing annoys me more than people talking over each other, so the only person eligible to speak is the person touching the bald head. But, uh, when three people jumped up and had their hand on my head, I got completely fed up with it, to be honest. <laughs> right, I love you. Yeah, stay down, stay down, mate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, brilliant idea. What a terrible, terrible idea. Right, can I just... Literally, I only want this meeting to be five minutes. You called about seven or eight meetings compared to Geordie's one. Why was that? <laughs> I hate meetings more than anyone on the island. I can't stand them. Sorry about this. Very, very quick meeting. The things just kept happening. Right, uh, last meeting I'm ever going to call. It was a meeting about the ration run. OK, fourth meeting. And there was a be meeting after the ration run. Sorry, guys. Very, very quick meeting. Oh, I just getting, kept having to call them, you know. I was miserable. I hate every minute of every one. But meetings are better when you can tell people to shut up. Fair enough. <laughs> Has anyone got any other business? Apart from Salvo, who said too much already. Yeah. What situations did you have to deal with and how did you cope with them? I had to deal with, um, first thing I had to deal with was um, a situation with between Salvo and Sean. OK, thank you very much. Anzi, don't talk to me anymore. I want to know, where is the fire? Uh, basically, Salvo just started up at Sean because Sean was trying to start a fire. I just like this and now where is the fire? Salvo called me over and tried to get me involved in it. Hey, leader. What? 10 to 15 matches. Can you, can you send me what is the fire? There's no fire, Salvo. Do you really think he meant to uh, waste 15 matches? Yeah. Do you think he yeah. meant to do it? Yeah, I saw. Then when I think on his side, oh, why you change? Why you change? You are now different because no, I'm leader. No, I'm not different. No, you're different. I'm not different. I saw. OK, you are his lawyer. No, and he started going on. And... I ended up screaming at him. <laughs> why are you, are you defending? Why are you writing everything? No, no, because else you wrong defend every him. Time? Push me so far then I'll snap. Of course it is. Over he didn't 50. mean to use 50. How many people do you want to hate you before you go home? Frighten myself practically. Oh, I had to go and have five quiet minutes on the beach. Oh, but we'll call a meeting oh. this evening and I'm going to go with you because you're being an absolute. Oh. Frankly. So I wandered off to the beach. Two minutes later he joined me on the beach, wanted a quiet word. Didn't want the camera crew around, but then the camera crew came around anyway. <laughs> So then, uh, you know, you started off again. I'm upset today. It's not possible I'm upset. But two minutes later, he was like, OK, you're right. Oh, yeah. OK. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so he went off and did his apologies. Well, Liam, I apologise. No. Thank you. Simon. Coming up after the ads, Simon comes runner-up in the Mr. Popularity contest. He feels like he's a dictator and it's... Sean doesn't fare much better. Sean, to me, is just completely boring. And when it comes down to choosing the best and worst leaders, the handbags are really flying. Leon's two key words for the week were... Regimentation and refinement. Two R's. <laughs>
See, if I was selected to be in charge of the group, I'd be up here, superb vantage point, using my telescope, making sure that all the cast were carrying out my orders. But is that what they do round here? Oh, drop your telescope. Oh, that's better. Woohoo! Look at Vicky. Looking good! Obviously, being a leader isn't always a bundle of laughs. When there's dirty work to be done, there's only one person to do it. So I'm a leader, I'll just explain. This is my hat, 16 pieces of paper. That we put to the side. There's one pin. Go or stay. Go or stay. Do you understand that? Go or stay? If she wants to stay, I want her to stay. I feel like an ass. I know it comes down to me. I just, I just can't do this. I don't have any pleasure in saying this, but it's in favour of going. Right, right, guys. Um, it's come to my attention today through Hut Cam that Donna and Gemma have nominated themselves to leave the island. Uh, it's time that we vote Al off because he's fed up with us now and he wants to go. Now. So hands up if you're willing to vote Al to go. I, I would see you in London. Maybe we go out for looking somebody else. It would appear that all of Simon's hard work as a builder on Yakuve has paid off. Because, apart from myself, it seems that he's the luckiest leader in town. I've had it easy in respect that we've been treated all week. Um, obviously, the man Friday thing's not a treat, but it was a good crack that everyone gets up the hill and goes a bit sort of chopper. It really was a great laugh up there. Friday! I'm just about to start my night of partying with the cast, and I've brought them some really, really cool goodies. There was also a couple of other individuals that Brighton drew a week up as leader. Do you remember a certain Santa Claus comedy coming along and delivering presents to you? No, I don't. No? No. No, you don't remember me coming no. in with a little hamper? Oh, no. Oh, what, that, that little small bottle of beer? Yeah, that one. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I remember that now. That was really, really interesting. <laughs> I'm holding half a stubby of the best damn thing. <laughs> Couldn't make my night any better. You guys, like, sort of right out. Um, cheered everyone up. Annie Peters was here. Lucky old Simon had my boss turn up with gifts for the cast. Oh, Andy Peters, welcome to you. Thank you, Al. Hey. Hello, y'all. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I've never seen you so excited. <laughs> I couldn't come all this way and visit you on your own island without bringing you a small gift. Oh. That reaction from those kids, man, that blew me uh, away. I have to say, I mean, it was a real, without sounding cheesy, I mean, it was one of those heart-stopping moments. So, oh my god, the man. As soon as I arrived with the box and they saw that I'd brought a cool box with me, they, you know, they were just like, oh my god, he's brought something for us. He's brought something for us. Uh -oh. <laughs> I can't believe one bottle of fizzy green stuff and one bar of chocolate can make 13 people that happy. Oh my god, it tastes so good. <laughs> Sarah looked as if she was going to burst into tears. I mean, she was over the moon, and they all were. Mm. I'm chuffed that we did it now. Geordie. Hey, I'm Andy. Now, you've worked on um, all three of the Shipwrecked um, series so far, and you've also been on some fabulous sets like ER and Hollyoaks and yeah. As If. How does this compare? You come here, and this is, I mean, it's a set. It is a setting for a show. But my goodness, this has blown all the others away. It's so real. So good to see you, Andy. How are you? <laughs> I'm much better now that you're here. Oh, God bless you for that. Seeing them all again today, on set, doing what they do, oh, it's actually it's a, really, it's a really moving moment. I, mean, I can't tell it anyway. It really is just really, really funny. So with all that happening, everybody must have loved Simon's reign as leader, didn't they? Simon's trying be a dictator. He wants everyone to do what he wants, when he wants, in the style he wants. Then it goes a little something like this. It's simple. We're going to try and have a bit more fun. I'm saying there's more food than just two days. Hey, listen, you're not hearing me properly. You are being very negative. I can see it in your face. How sensitive do you think you are? No. If you want to do it, then it's your decision. Just do it. If you don't want to show me your list, that's fine. Please don't hesitate to ask questions, and I'll tell you if that's going to be repeated. OK. Uh, how is everyone feeling about that so far? Where, where we have a problem 
is when he takes in the leadership and took took it into his hands and becomes a dictator and go. But in, in question, are you in question about my leadership, the way I tackled? No, no, no. no. Anyone who's in a position of command has to deal with people criticising their methods of yeah. um, decision making. Have you had any of that yet? Oh, I've had loads of it. Yeah, loads of it. The first meeting that was held with Simon was just a disaster, basically. Quite simple. In the meetings, uh, this is my meeting, uh, so I don't appreciate anyone talking over the top of me. And uh, I've, I've jumped up and I've sort of gone all in a china shop and just sort of let loose on, on the whole meeting and everything come out quite sort of aggressive. Like at the moment, this is the way I'm seeing it. We need to get some things done. Yeah, a leader standing up here and the leader needs to lead. It's just like his opinion counts and nobody else's does. Hello, Hello everyone. Can you listen? Ready. Let's get this going. With Man Friday, I was sort of running around, helping, uh, trying to organise things, and there was a lot of sort of um, controversy with me telling people what to do. The whole Man Friday thing, it was like as if Simon was Man Friday. Right, okay, what's going to happen? Obviously, I'm going to deliver it here. If you can all get in a semicircle sort of thing around me here. I tell you what, should I just tell everybody where to sit? Places, everybody. Vicky, you sit over there. Leon, you sit over there, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's like telling me where to sit. He feels like he's a dictator, and it. Marks out of 10 for yourself and the reason you'd give yourself that number? I wouldn't say I was 10 out of 10 simply because I'm not that vain. So what other leaders did we have? Oh, there was, um, you know, the tall guy. The one that the cast were all talking about on the ration run. Um, oh. Like, being a leader is just the same as being a manager of a process that already exists. <laughs> this chicken is officially GS certified. Military. I used to be a pen. I don't like to be passed that way. I used to be a professional <laughs> paintballer. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to be a magician. <laughs> oh, military People, child. People, military child. <laughs> oh. One day I kill military child. <laughs> Got a shoulder on the brain. <laughs> I know I often harp on about it, right, but your military background must have helped you when you were a leader, surely. Uh, a little. I've been a leader in the military. I was in charge of an entire dorm, which basically you have 26 people under you, and you make sure things get done. When you were a uh, leader here, did you get a lot of flack, or was most of it praise? Um, actually, I got a little bit more praise than I expected. Yeah, you did all right. Second day, Sarah pulled me aside and said she's seen a good change. When he was leader, that was when he was the most interesting. And yeah, that's true. And I also got pulled aside by, by Alan, and he complimented me on my meeting skills. He kept meeting short, didn't let people waffle on. We're all gathered here for a meeting for some reason, I don't know. All good for me. I was very appreciative and surprised that someone would actually pull you aside. It takes a lot of effort for someone to do that. You were saying that you have got a background in first aid. What did you have to deal with there? Salvo. Oh, man. Tipped on a nail and went right through his flip flop behind that. He wouldn't listen at all. Sal, Sal, right here, Sal. Okay. Sal, listen, listen. Gentle, you gentle. apply pressure for it, but it's got to be applying yeah. pressure. And so I'm holding his ankle and he kept yanking it back. It's okay, it's okay. Saying it hurts and trying to push me off. And he wouldn't listen to me. He needed to be lower than his leg. And so I told him to get off the log and he wouldn't do it. Oh, oh, my floor. Oh. My floor. I should imagine he's not the most welcoming patients in the world. Not at all. Not man, at all. man. Does this hurt right here? Yeah, here, yeah, man. He's, he's either very easy to get along with or absolutely hell to deal with. Oh, man. So nice you clean my face. <laughs> Do you think any of the people that have been leaders so far would make it as a leader in the military? Um, Simon would be about the closest. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You can't have a leader in the US military with a barnet like that. Like Simon? No, that wouldn't be authorised. Like it, really, son. Just wouldn't be allowed in the military with it. To be honest, you wouldn't want to go in there anyway. Well, cheers, Skipper, anyway. Thanks, Sean. Thank In the leadership showdown, who's a rootin' tootin' varmint, and who deserves the sheriff's badge? <laughs> the best leader for me was was definitely Geordie. He's a 
different type of leader, sort of a uh, brave heart, you know, lead from the front. I like his logical way of thinking and I like his work ethic. Geordie here makes me want to work harder and, you know, make this place work. But then he had such a laid back approach to everything. He made a good first impression in the meeting. <laughs> it was so cool to just have your leader be a seal for a little while. So, obviously, obvious choice, really. Sean, wake up, Sean. Sean is a leader, he's just absolutely useless. I don't think Chloe has the, how would we say it, balls to, to be a leader. Affirmative, affirmative. In his words, he was... We're managing the process that's already there. The manager of a process that already exists. It's the tone of voice where we need to say, stuff needs to get done. He's the worst leader I've ever seen in my life. A few negative reports about his leadership? No idea, I thought he was really good. Ladies and gents, thank you very much. Leon's leadership started off very um, dictatorial. His two key words for the week were... Regimentation and refinement, the two R's. Uh, which indicates to me that he saw himself as some sort of a colonel of an army. Once you get used to this kind of regimentation, we all work better in the community. He's not a politician. He comes across every day when he opens his mouth. Leon likes to express his intelligence by using sentences containing at least 80 words. Uh, and cultural environment at every opportunity. We're decompressing for the environment we're used to at home and we didn't really realise the whole weight and brevity that these things are here to make us survive for the next ten weeks. To be honest, as soon as I heard the word cultural environment, I said, I was straight away, you know, didn't, didn't pay any attention to what else he said, kind of picked up from the rest of the group at the end. Sounds reasonable? Yeah. Okay. So just a little bit, just that little bit extra, it's not really extra hard. Um Tell you what, being a leader, fantastic. Watch this. Shades please, CJ. Sure thing. Nice one. Jeff Bro and Parch Coffee. There you go, bus. Lovely. A warm one next time, sunshine. Al Convy, saying goodbye. Next time on Extra, we take a look back at some of the good times. I think we're in birds, we probably are. The bad times. <laughs> they barely speak too much and the sad times. I can't talk to my family and friends, which are the people that mean the most to me. Oh, and of course, there's me, Al C, to keep everyone calm. Have you got a presenter on your show? Don't think so. Turn the camera off. Turn it off. They won't want to see this. You can get out of the way for a start. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the last in the present series of Shipwrecked Extra. Buckle up, lock up your daughters and brace yourself for a nostalgic tour of the top ten weeks on your cuvee. Bring me sunshine. Now I've got a few of the cast together back at home to find out which were their best bits. And it is. Let your arms be as warm as the sun from up above. Bring me fun. Bring me sunshine, bring me love, sweet love. Bring me fun, bring me 
sunshine bring me Now, the cast obviously had a hard time hunting and gathering on Yukuve, but when they did find their food, it wasn't exactly paka taka, though they did have a few Jamie Oliver moments. <laughs> <laughs> Geordie, on one of his many forages, went off and found um, a new food stuff for us called taro, which is basically about the sort of size of a decent loaf of bread. If you ate it, you've got like pins and needles in your mouth. And it wasn't even taro, but it was some crazy vegetable like <laughs> plant, cum, tree, bark, root so. substance that I think it was Geordie and Simon found and carried back over their shoulder. It was that big. What is it? Hopefully, taro. I reckon if it's edible, that's, that's wicked. So we just whacked it on the grill and we thought, yeah, this will be brilliant. That's going to be so delicious. It's ready. If you leave it out of the dryer for 24 hours and then boil it 17 million times, and then it's OK to eat. Oh, oh it's nice. Shitty. Much more like potatoes, isn't it? Looked pretty nasty. <laughs> I tried a bit of white bit. Oh, it was rotten. We're all looking round at each other, and people are sort of, eh, there's like this sort of choking noise going on. My mouth is starting to itch, though. Yeah. I have too many spoils in my tongue. And the few people ate it, and they just put stinging nettles in their throat as well. It hurts. It tastes good, but it just hurts to eat it. I've poisoned you all. <laughs> it was like eating a lump of cardboard, so I just spat that out and passed on another meal. Luckily for Alan, there was always Salvo. My pizza. He was saying, you know, you get me, now, you get me this now, and I'll make your pizza. And he's like, yeah, all right, whatever. My pizza's so brilliant, oh my god. It was it was really nice, especially at the time when you're eating yam stuff like that, you remind yourself of how hard you've had it, and then you eat something as nice as that and you really tell the difference. Boy's done good. Boy done very good. Very impressed. Salvo's pizza was absolutely amazing. He made a really nice pizza. It was nicer than any pizza you get in like pizza restaurants. Golly gosh. I'm gonna go for a walk. Mm. Mm. Uh, Limey. Of course, this is the best pizza I've <laughs> ever had. <laughs> oh, mamma mia, what can you say? <laughs> when food's low, the last thing on the cast mind is having some fun. I mean, it's no holiday, but it's not a boot camp either. So we, the crew, provide them with a method to find some grub and have a laugh along the way. Simple. Looking back, I mean, it does seem absolutely ridiculous, some of the things we got up to there. I want to pray to our gods. Please hear my prayer. Hey, I wanna, hey, I wanna, rice, rice, rice. I, I wasn't embarrassed by many of the things that we had to do. We did have to do some silly stuff. One of the silliest things was talking to a little wooden statue. Absolutely nothing. nothing. We had to worship gods. I didn't have a problem with that. At the time, it felt like a really good idea to go and pray for some food because I was really hungry and I love my food. Dear goddess, with respect. We run out of yam and sweet potato. I want to pray to our gods. Please help us. Can you bring us some rice, please? Could possibly contact um, some breweries and get some beer delivered, that would be excellent too. Thinking about it, I think, oh, how stupid, everybody's going to watch it and think, what a complete plonker sitting there praying to a statue. But it brought us food, so I don't care, whatever, whatever you people make us do, it's fine by me. We didn't only bring you food, we brought you spectacle. Your prayers will be answered in a matter of days. The goddess is rising, so lift up your gaze. It's fantastic when the aeroplane come over, like, A, hey, because it was like, wow, there's an aeroplane, and it was, it was doing it for us. It felt a little bit special, like it was a show for us. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't quite believe that it was from the gods as such. It was just like a, a sheer gift from the gods, which, which it was, basically. And um, it just felt so good to, to know that for at least the next couple of days, we were going to be eating something of substance that um, didn't make us run to the toilet and back every five minutes. Thank you, goddess! Oh, it's incredible to see the food coming because you know I didn't have a great affiliation for yam or breadfruit in the first place, so anything else would have done. Come on, Sam. Come on. Yeah. 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 It was 
was like Christmas Day, it really was. It was like one of the high points, definitely, any time we got food was. And the way they did it as well was really exciting. I was choked. The cast's next excitement was calling Man Friday. It was so important to us and worshipping a goddess that didn't even exist. As ridiculous as it sounds, you know, it was a means to an end and it got us food, so I was prepared to worship pretty much anything while I was there. It's funny, if it happened in like the first week, I'd have felt really self-conscious doing it. I felt, oh, I'm just going to look an absolute prat doing this. We call it We had to sing and dance and everything, that was embarrassing. I don't want to see that. We call it from your we totally fell into character and for us, you know, it was real, it was completely real. And uh, I've got to admit, I loved every minute of it. We need you. Help us, please! I just went for it. And, it, you know, and I fully enjoyed it and I'm so glad I did it. Chanting like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> so the crew flew in Man Friday, Pierre, who had been unable to make it six weeks earlier thanks to a broken leg. We ate everything that we could have eaten, all the biscuits, and we were jumping up and down. We had the most amazing sugar rush you can imagine, and we were completely incontrollable. Everybody loves sounding off in Hut Camp, but the shows that grabbed my attention were the ones to rival your very own shipwrecked extra, and no one did it with more style than Vicky and her friends. Not bad, eh? Lick of paint does wonders for it. on the beach, that was another way of entertaining ourselves. We thought, you know, let's do our own little show. Everyone thought we were the bimbos on the island, so we thought, you know, let's milk it a bit. Mm. So we thought, yeah, how am we going to stand out on this show <laughs> and not look, you know, like fade into the background? I think we're bimbos, we probably are. We went into Hut Cam and sat there, made up a theme tune, did our own show. Hi, this is Vicky and Sarah from Bimbo's on the Beach. They tried to find us, but we've gone far, so we can sunbathe upon the sand, then we don't have to give a helping hand. Hi there, and welcome to Bimbo's on the Beach. How did the incident come to be that um, you girls took your tops off and rubbed your breasts on the camera? <laughs> We didn't do that. Mm. It was only for a laugh. It was nothing serious. Would you get your, your, boobs, your boobs out on camera no. again? No. Yeah. No, I don't mean yeah, that. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. You're telling porky pies, Vicky, as we know you've been in a saucy photo shoot with Sarah for an Australian glossy. bikini and have my boobs out that way but not full flesh <laughs> mm. now all of our cast are both luscious and debonair some might even say scrummy but who took the crown of top island totty mm? <laughs> yes <laughs> the best looking girl on my friend I tell you who yeah. 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 Best looking girl in this close run thing that. Vicky as well is nice, but Malia. <sighs> Best looking girl has to be Sarah because she's a beauty. Sarah was cracking looking. Great body, great face. Mmm, yeah, lovely. Gemma was incredible. <laughs> Gemma was gorgeous. Malia, the attraction was different with, with Malia. Uh, it weren't so much her looks or anything. She was cute and she had big knockers and that, but nah, not coming back home. If I ever saw her in London or anything, I don't think she'd beat me tight. <laughs> Time for a quick break, but be sure to catch me when we come back. Find out who had the best birthday, Yakubi style. I'm so glad that I spent my birthday on the island. My birthday was fantastic. And see me oh. making a meal of it. Oh, yes. Yes.
most of the time it was perfect peace on Yukuvi, but when they got tired, they got grumpy. And there was one argument which was an absolute perler. Honestly, it was like handbags at dawn. I've uh, just received information by the crew about an anonymous nomination concerning one individual on this island. I think it's a bit of a witch hunt. Absolutely, definitely. I think it boils down to the fact they just didn't like her. Yeah, I didn't vote for her because I wouldn't have liked anyone to have taken away the experience from me. It's just a shame, you know, that she lost that experience, but um, I think she only has herself to blame for that. <sighs> Who knows? That particular person is Genevieve. I couldn't believe it. It probably was good to vote her off because I think she would have kept them stealing from the group. Don't tell anyone, but we got an egg earlier and we put it in the mm -hmm. kettle on the stove. Mm -hmm. We got our boiled egg out, peeled it, and we had half each behind oh. the tree. <laughs> I think she was kicked off for all the wrong reasons because at the end of the day, all four of us did exactly the same as what she did that day and it just makes me mad. I couldn't believe it. Genevieve needed to go. Uh, my view on that hasn't changed. Everything's circumstantial, and in the circumstances that we were in, you know, it was the only thing to be done. And uh, really, it was for our survival. Leon was leader at the time. He was too keen to do something, like, radical. Why you don't respect me? Because you steal. Because I steal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't guilty of anything. If I could turn back time, I would have done a lot, taken that whole situation a lot different. It's fine, but it's not, it's not straight, you know, because I really, really liked it here. Well, they just didn't like her. Unlucky, Genevieve, you was definitely the scapegoat. Oh, get them, saucer of milk, table two. Tell you what, though, it was great inspiration for singing the blues. I got them shipwrecking blues. Got some bad, bad news. You know the one, the one they call Genevieve. They're having a meeting. Looks like she got to leave. Seventeen thousand and two. Seventeen thousand and. <laughs> How you doing? Just caught me enjoying myself on the beach. Simple need you see for a simple guy. A jar, some sand, and the ability to count. And I am as happy as Larry. But how did the cast entertain themselves best? The entertainment while we were there. One day it was. It really was quite spectacular. Um, yeah, you know, simple volleyball game on the beach. So uh, you know, but it was more like the Olympics for us, cast v crew. One nil. I don't remember it. You don't remember the crew on the cast volleyball game? Who won it? We! Yeah, here we go. Did we got cheated, didn't we? Next one is the winner. Win! Cheating or not, the crew won. Yeah! Yeah! Now at the end of the day, it's a game of two halves, isn't it? And I thought, to be honest, the lads and the Sheila down on the deck played pretty well. Nice one. And we had Sean playing for us, don't forget. He used to be a professional volleyball player. Yeah. Oh. If that Sean was a volleyball, I think it would. <laughs> there were those who preferred more sedate forms of entertainment. Vicky and Sarah definitely spent the majority of their time on the beach um, tanning it up. I thought that when we got to the island, it'd be like one big holiday. We could just, you know, go out, sunbathe. I'd save a bit of money on some beds back at home and just enjoy myself and thought it'd be like one big holiday where it wasn't. While some of the cast were unhappy about Vicky and Sarah's antics, Jeff didn't seem too bothered. Lovely looking girls. I was happy for them to improve their looks. Go on, get tan. Do it. 
Look, no one enjoys their knees up on their birthday as much as I do. Orange squash, past the parcel, magicians, loads and loads of prezzies, brilliant. But on Yakubi, it wasn't quite as simple as that. It was more a case of blood, sweat and beers. Not my sort of party, I can tell you. Mmm. Oh, I love but orange squash. Birthdays on Yakubi were fantastic. It was like it was everybody's birthday or Christmas come all at once. Um, everyone waited for them, everyone counted them down in the calendar and everyone planned it, you know, to the very last tee. My birthday was fantastic. You know, who's, who can say that they've got uh, two pineapples, 30 boiled sweets, a litre of oil and two goats for their birthday? No one anywhere. Like, it's better than getting a BMX and a crash helmet, isn't it? And it was the first time, it was, what, the third weekend Thanks, that we really yeah. enjoyed ourselves and had a muck about. We were going to have fun. First, first time we smiled, it was nice. Uh... <laughs> Julie's birthday, yeah. He, he had this idea that he wanted it to be a formal sit-down dinner at the table he'd made. Salva made a big birthday cake and had like a party and we had alcohol. You know, top marks to Geordie, let's all get dressed up for a dinner party. Some people wore slightly more than others. Thankfully some of the ladies wore less than they probably should have done. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm so glad that I spent my birthday on the island because I can think back and remember that birthday out of all of them. Oh my God! Oh, we Everyone was just drunk. We were just all hammered. <laughs> just they are the best days, you know. Even no matter what the weather's like, everyone is like really up for having a really good time. <laughs> On every show, there's always one for the ladies, but on Shipwrecked, he was also one for the lads. That's right, every day, Geordie was hitting the headlines. The golden boy. You know, we've got a great thing here. Geordie worked harder than anyone else. He knew more about the stuff we had to do than anyone else. He brought his guitar, so he was the most entertainment. He was the entertainment for every evening. I do still feel that Geordie was one of the best looking on the island. He was the best looking. He was also a really, really nice, thoughtless, selfless person. What can I say? I'd like to thank uh, my mother. Geordie was like the goody goody type guy. He did everything and he was like a diamond. He went off and helped build the boat, constantly fishing. I mean, even one time, me and Sarah were in the sea um, and we said, you know, come on for a laugh, let's strip off Nike because Geordie and everyone was fishing. So we took our clothes off and went, Geordie, swung our bras around. He's like, yeah, girls, carried on fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name's Al as well, and I'm the one who's had to put out with Al Combi for the past ten weeks. <laughs> he has had some pretty memorable moments. Oh, I dropped the telescope. When the chickens behind me finally meet them... There we go. The cast are having a meeting at the moment. <laughs> the cast will then move on to a neighbouring island and they can catch a goat or two. Look, eyes! Oh. Look, I couldn't turn up the other night, so I had another day. What's your problem? He was elected new. Oh, no, go and see leader. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me, you little freak! But why did they choose him, and why did they choose the rest of the people? No, oh, that was almost there. That was the right beginning. What? Anyone who... Oh, God. Reckons they can do my job perfectly. <laughs> Naughty. So there I was, right? I'm outside the school, I'm having a good chat with one of my mates, and then the teacher comes out and says something like, Oh, you're such an idiot! And I was like, Oh, come on, what's your problem? <laughs> we could keep that one in. Right, it's almost time for me to go, so we're just gathering all the cast into a big group where they have their meetings, take a few snaps for some publicity shots. Extras presenter Al is a uh... 
he entertained us for a while, you know, he served his purpose. It basically, he was always up for a laugh and, yeah, put a smile on your face. Yeah, he's cool. He's welcome. It's really relaxed and it was nice. It really is a tough life, this yeah, presenting arc, honestly. Really. Shipwrecked extra. Oh, it's been so difficult. And look what happens and to me. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Oh, sorry to see me go. <laughs> I hope, with all my heart, you're going to have a good trip, for I. Well, I guess it's time for me to read Shipwrecked Extra, a bedtime story, and put it to sleep. I'll leave you now with a man who described life on your cuvee better than anyone else. Take it away, Geordie. Oh, and time has passed us by Each day it moves so slowly But with such amazing pace it's the nights we won't forget Feeling safe with Dravuni That's your Kuvi Lebu life It's the smile upon your face You're hoping it's not over Most good things must end But don't forget your place You're part of the Pacific that's your Kuvile who lie. Oh, and time has passed us by. Each day it moves so slowly, with such amazing pace. It's the nights we won't forget, feeling safe with Trophony. That's your 